Hey there, welcome back to another video in the series about the Harvest Right freeze dryer and our adventures in freezing whatever food we can come across and try. <laughs> um, last time we did some heavy cream, apples, and bananas. Well, believe it or not, all the fruit disappeared pretty quickly. The heavy cream is still sitting on our counter, mostly so we can kind of keep an eye on it to see what it's going to do. We haven't tried to use it in any of uh, our coffee or any food products or anything so at this point it's just an experiment to see um, if you watched our previous video which um, documented that it was still very high in moisture content or I guess at that point not moisture but fat content and had quite a residue left on the trays now that might be normal to us nothing is normal because we are trying most things for the first time I'd say we probably have fruit down pat, and now we are going to try a new fruit in addition to some of our old family favorites at this point. We are going to be trying some kiwi, um, and I'd like to see what it tastes like in a dried form, and if it's not so great, we'll just add it to smoothies. Another change that we did was with our apples, as I had said before, we did lemon juice of course to help to keep them from browning well a portion of the tray that you'll see go in today has cinnamon on it we have been wanting to try a little bit different flavoring and see how things stick and stay um adhered to food when it's not something that's like cooked or baked previously so at this point um when i show you everything you'll see some pieces that look probably dirty but it's just cinnamon and later on in the video, we will be reviewing our spaghetti and meat sauce that we freeze dried a few videos ago and are looking forward to sharing our thoughts on that process and how it went. We'll also be doing a quick maintenance check on the oil pump to verify that the oil is at a safe amount. You don't want it to be too low. Um, on it, it has a gauge of max and minimum and of course several dashes to show, you know, gauges on where everything is and we just want to verify that everything is still enough to run a full cycle. Of course, as a new channel, you'll see some adjustments occurring throughout our videos. Um, in the past, you probably saw a lot on my phone, which will probably still happen down the road as I navigate between angles and learning how to use this camera and the lenses that I have with it. If you have any suggestions, I am trying a new feature on it on the manual, so hopefully I'll stay in focus. I have no doubt that it is extremely frustrating to watch a video that is not in focus. Anyways, we will cut to the video and get back to the food. And as I said before, we'll be doing kiwi, bananas, apples, some with a little bit of cinnamon, and tuna noodle casserole for our new meal item to try out this time. Looks like lucky us, our oil level is still in the safe zone. So no additional oil will need to be added. I believe we're right above the halfway mark and our oil is still nice and clear. So a good positive thing, of course, no example to be needed today for uh, adding anything or maintenance, but I'll take that as a good sign that everything is running smoothly and going well. I'll do a little self hand work here with the camera, but the screen can't really function on the camera. I'm sure it's because, you know, being a computerized screen, it doesn't capture very well. So if you haven't watched a uh, past video, on the screen right now it has a customize and a start button to get the unit going and we're going to go ahead and cool the unit down like a pre-chill while i get the trays ready and bring them downstairs here with where the unit is and um that normally takes about 15 minutes for that to happen so we will come back and i'll show the trays and process of putting them in just like we normally do As our unit begins to cool down, of 
course, you'll notice an increased amount of sound. Um, I'll go over the trays of food that we have. The first is a puny amount of bananas. Um, it was just one banana that was on its way out, so we figured to save it and freeze dry it. Our next is the tuna noodle casserole. Um, nothing too crazy about that, but looking forward to trying a meal item again. Our next are the kiwis, and I believe this is about three kiwis on here. I did try to keep them spaced, mostly because I just don't want it to get too sticky since this pretty high moisture content. Um, but I am most excited about these. And our final one is the apples, and as you can see, the front portion has cinnamon sprinkled on it, and I didn't want to do all cinnamon just in case I don't know, it didn't taste good or didn't stick. I didn't want to waste all the cinnamon. And of course we know that we like apples plain. So of course they were all dipped in lemon juice as I was cutting them. And all of this is on a pre-freeze and um, that definitely allows to help with the freeze dryer cutting back on total amount of freeze time. I just want to take another minute to thank you for watching this video. We are new to the whole YouTube scene and appreciate every watch, like, subscriber, whatever you want to call it. We love that you've taken your time to follow this series and see what we come up with. Also, if you are a user of the Harvest Right freeze dryer and you have any recipe ideas that you'd be willing to share, we would love to hear from you or be directed to any other channels that might, in addition, show recipes. I've been trying to find ideas that are a one bag type meal that can be reconstituted just with hot water. So if you have any suggestions, we would love to hear them. Our freeze dryer is done with its 15 minute cool down, so let's get all of our food loaded up into the unit. Now on the screen, as usual, it has the reminder that once you've loaded your food into the freeze dryer, that you want to make sure that your food A was not mixed pre-frozen and non-frozen, which in this case, all of our food is already pre-frozen. And then the second item is to make sure that you close your drain valve. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, and then we'll move back to the screen and start the whole process. Our drain valve is closed, our unit is filled, and yeah, it won't let me focus on that, but we've got the only option left, and that's to press continue, and we will see all this delicious food tomorrow. So as our water heats up here, we have our spaghetti that we freeze dried a few weeks ago. We're looking forward to giving it a try and see how we like it. Hopefully we love it because we have five other bags downstairs of it. Um, we currently are heating up 14 ounces of water and from what I've seen and compared to other major manufacturers, they have that same amount for the same product. Similar other products that maybe don't include a pasta item have less water, so we're gonna stick with the 14 just because it seems like it 
it is a good amount. Uh, my husband thought that we should at least use that as our baseline and we can adjust from there if we want. So we will see how this goes. We're going to go ahead and cut our sleeve open here. And this is one of the bags that I went ahead and double sealed. So our notch is right there. So we'll have to pull over below that. Not a problem though. And of course, take out the oxygen absorber. Definitely not the easiest part to get that. Got that out. And it feels looser than when it originally comes out. There, I think. Now it's focusing a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and get the water poured in here and then we'll seal it up. Now, a major manufacturer would have a zip seal to close this and I'm just going to be using as I call little office clips. So we have our very hot boiling water and there's already 14 ounces pre-measured in here. So as from what I've read, once you pour in your water carefully as it is very warm, smells really good already. It's like things are coming to life right before my very eyes. All of our water is in there. And it says to give it a stir. Try to make sure that everything gets into some of that water. And seal it up to keep all that heat in there. I'm going to fold twice just to ensure that everything doesn't escape. And we'll let this sit here. We'll start with five minutes as that's the standard time that I saw on anybody else's directions and come back and check on it. We went ahead and let this sit for 10 minutes. Um, we found another company. It just seemed like five minutes might not be long enough. So we'll go ahead and open this up. See what it looks like. Kind of like a mushy mess, but it smells very good. And we'll see about the liquid amount. It may have been too much for um, what this meal is. And of course, just going off of trial and error at this point, we will see how it goes. So I'm going to pour it into this bowl just to try. And just set that to the side. Um, we'll get to some taste testing here. So we're here, we're gonna try out our spaghetti and meat sauce that was freeze dried a few weeks ago. And what are your opinions first off, just looking at it? I would say just looking at it, it's uh very saucy so I would say the water level probably needs to be adjusted um, but the noodles and um, meat everything looks uh, looks good what about the smell it smells delicious I don't say it smells yeah you know, just like we made it so it really does and uh, for full disclosure we did bring some extra Parmesan cheese to grate over this to add it after we take a few sample bites to begin with we do have a fork and spoon in case it's a little too saucy Go for it. Mm -hmm. Honest opinions only. No, well, that's good. So, uncomfortably too saucy still? Mm. I mean, yeah, I would say the water level could be adjusted down Cause what for we did our size. We did yeah. 14 ounces. Yeah. Maybe start with 10. Wow, that's one. Mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. Like the salt flavor is perfect. Yeah, it's not real salty. 
I could definitely eat that. Mm -hmm. I won't lie, I don't know if I hate the amount of liquid level. No, it's not bad. Because it probably, as it cools down, it'll become... Oh, it'll become thicker. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you were starving and wanted to dive right in. But... I definitely think for the trail, out hiking or whatever, it would be perfect. Sorry if you're not a big fan of listening to people eat. You can fast forward through some of this. But I would say overall, this is definitely a winner. Um, spaghetti is a very popular item for us. Um, our son loves it. It's more messy for him. But like the noodles taste great. Um, they're not like crunchy or anything like that. The water has absorbed pretty well in there. And, you know, decreasing it probably would would help with that. Mm. That's good. That's definitely good. And as a thing, we had Parmesan cheese on the tray first before we put the spaghetti down. So there already is cheese in there. Um, so we just added a little bit more. Okay, so we just devoured the spaghetti. It was really good. Mm, I think I would have uh, been able to go for another package of it to be completely honest. Um, but since now we're done, we were noticing other things about the meal. Yeah, I was like, the way that the meat got reconstituted was very good. And the uh, mushrooms, I mean, were just like uh, they came out of the jar. So that was, a, that was nice. Yeah, um, you can truly taste no difference. So if you've had freeze dried food from the store that you can buy and then reconstitute it yourself, whether it's for convenience or like out on the trail, like Brad said, um, you know, those meals are always pretty good. They a lot of times are very high in sodium. Making this food ourselves and then setting some aside after a meal helps us probably think that what we're doing is not too bad and it's mildly healthy because it's uh, good quality ingredients and you know exactly what's in it. Um, pretty much repeating everything he said, like everything tasted great, nothing weird at all, but uh, we look forward to eating more of it. Yeah, I would say it's a good first, uh, first go. Yeah. 100%. So. Awesome. Be uh, interesting to see, hey, like a year study from now, how they taste, and yeah. uh, you know if any of the flavors or um, textures change uh, with a little age on the product, uh, seeing as it's not a mass-produced high sodium. Yes, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> Sixteen hours and forty-five minutes later. The process is complete. Our food is hopefully completely done, but only upon inspection will we find out if it needs more dry time or anything like that. So we'll get right in. And of course, first you have to open up that drain valve, release the pressure, and we'll go ahead and warm the trays just to make them easier to handle. Although I did bring down um, a like pot holder to grab them in case we didn't do that. And in addition, some other things that I brought down, again, our marker to label our bags, a kitchen scale to weigh out, try to get the most even amount of uh, weight across our meal item, our tuna noodle casserole, and a couple different sizes of mason jars to package that fruit in since we want to eat it and try it as soon as possible. So let's get going and open up the freeze dryer. Now we will go ahead and release the pressure and open up the drain valve so we can get the door open to the freeze dryer and get our food out. We will also do a verification to make sure that our hose is not in the water. And open up the pipe. I think I finally got a good angle on that, so we're going to warm our trays. And it just takes a few minutes and we'll get everything else set up in the meantime. Carefully open our door. And unload 
our bananas. Our casserole. And our apples, some with cinnamon, some without. Go ahead and close our door. And start to look at everything we have here. First thing we have here on the left is our apples, some with cinnamon, some without. And we've done apples several times now, so I am very hopeful for these cinnamon dusted ones. The kiwi have definitely uh, changed color a bit, and it might just be because they're extremely cold still, but uh, they're definitely a lot less green than when they started and significantly flatter. Our casserole definitely has shrank significantly, and um, probably not as many bags will be used as I originally had planned, which is completely fine. And our bananas, funny enough, let me see if I can zoom in here. Seem to have some interesting bubbling going on so I'm not sure what that's about but um, in our adventure of freeze drying we're going to come across new things quite often we'll do the tuna last and everything else we're just going to put in mason jars so that's nice and quick so we'll do that first we have our fruit here and we'll get started on packaging it. I of course do want to take a little sample of this cinnamon apple mostly because it's a new change on an item we've done several times. And it's completely awesome so we'll definitely be doing that a lot more. Um, yeah. That is really good. It really accentuates that apple flavor while giving it a good cinnamon finish so wow my taste buds are loving it anyways we'll get this packaged up and move on to our casserole after that these kiwi slices into their container and of course since it's something new I definitely want to try this as well so let's give that a go yeah this is really good very tangy especially compared to the apple but a good snack if you're probably looking for something that has that sour kick and uh instead of turning to candy it's a it's a great option so we'll continue loading these up The bananas are definitely sticky, so I don't know if that was something about like freezing them or if it's just because this banana was more ripe than a previous one that we did. Um, not concerned about it, just uh, an observation. So I'm sure it's because it had a sh higher sugar content from being um, riper than previously. So this is the end of our fruit. And now we can move on to the tuna. So here is our tuna noodle casserole. And I have our scale here. So we can probably just divide these into two meals. Um, yes, it probably could fit into one large bag. But since we are in a learning curve about how much water to add back to this, I'd rather have it split into two, so if we overfill or anything like that, we have at least another one to try again and give it a whirl. So we'll get this sealed up 
with an oxygen absorber and use our impulse sealer to get it ready for a little bit of a shelf life. I'm going to go ahead and label these before we package it. Much easier to write on there. When I'm done packaging this food, I will include the gram amount on here, but since I'm not sure what that is yet, I won't do it until the end. So we'll go ahead and get into adding this to here, weighing it, putting an absorber in, sealing it, and yeah. I will take it. So we have our two bags of tuna noodle casserole and we'll split the difference at about 127 for each and now we'll go ahead and get our op oxygen absorbers in and I believe yes on here these bags have a little notch right there. Just opening it up ever so slightly. We are only using two, and there are ten in this bag. So there's one, two. We'll set our package aside. And one into here. And one into here. Now, if you've been watching our videos, the first time I used this impulse sealer, there was a bit of a learning curve and um, also at that time I additionally did double seals on all of our items because I'm not sure if I was pressing too hard or doing it too long or not long enough so as I said then I'll say now I'd rather be safe than sorry and um, I'll turn the sealer so you can see the dial and the light when we do this. We want the knob to be placed at a seven for mylar bags such as these. And if I didn't give a good look before, the back is just a plain silver. And as I had said, if you wanted to write directions or reminders or anything that's beneficial for you, this would be a, blank, a perfect blank canvas for you to do that. So, but at this point we're good. Um, after I'm done sealing, I'll go ahead and document the gram amount that's in each of these. So you want to get the impulse sealer right above these notches here. And get it in place. Press down, the light is on, the light is off, and you release. And you can see a pretty firm seal on there. I'll give that one a second, move to the other one, and do a second seal on both of these. So place it right above the notch. Light is on, off, release. Ooh, sorry, a little close there. So you can see that I am noticing about the center right here, it's a little additionally crimped. So I don't know if that's where I have it on here or just the way um, the bag is, is laying. So 
we'll move back to our first one and do another crimp and I'm gonna do it below the notch this time as I've said before we are probably gonna cut these open I realize the notches are a convenience factor but it doesn't really it doesn't matter And there's our double seal. So one there and one there. Our second bag here. Let's make sure the food is down at the bottom. Below the notch. Light on. Light off. And you do have to press pretty firmly, mostly just giving some information and two seals. So I went ahead and moved the dial to a five here and we are going to package our oxygen absorbers. And looks good. In a perfect world, I would have had our food saver to suck all that air out, but it's all right. We're good to go there. So our process is complete and we didn't need any extra dry time. So I'm going to go ahead and hit no defrost and it quiets down. It's my favorite part. And we'll go ahead and open the door now. And basically just do a quick look in there. Like you can see a lot of the condensation on top, mostly because that's we've had it open and then closed and a significant amount of condensation on the door. So definitely a lot of ice in there. Um, I'm not sure if it's the most ice I've seen, but um, can definitely see it pretty clearly. This door just ajar slightly. So air can go in and out as it needs to help defrost it. And ultimately, if there's any dust particles and things like that, they can't get in quite as easy. So until next time for our freeze drying adventure. As always, we'd like to thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw today with freeze drying the food, please feel free to watch our series up until this point, and the link is in the description of this video. I'm not sure how fast we'll get to attempting to try this casserole. Um, as you saw, it took us a while to get to the spaghetti um, with our regular cooking and just everything we have on hand. We just didn't want to waste it until we really thought it was good to give it a solid try and of course waiting gives you a chance to see how great your efforts are with uh, keeping it shelf stable for whatever amount of time you need if you would like to continue to follow our adventures as always just click subscribe and feel free to like or comment interact with us we would love to hear from you we look forward to seeing you in the next video